Hey, this is Anthony Threbsel. You watch this side and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Showy RFSR helmet available at Revzil.com. New 417, this is the brand new RFSR from Showy. In our estimation, even though Showy won't tell us this, this is what we believe to be the successor for the long running quest. We look at it. It is a well-designed, well-executed helmet. And when we compare it to something like the Quest, which lives in the line in the 300s, where this guy, four solids, are gonna come in right around that $400 mark, we look at it and say, you know what? It is a bit of an overhaul. The venting scheme has been overhauled. The shape has been changed. They have changed the shield change mechanism. It will now take a um, transitions lens. And you also have a removable inner liner. So if we look at in that frame, it is a big step forward. But we start to think about the showy. RFSR as a now $400 helmet playing in the same vein, in the same price range, in the same $100 bracket as the RF1200. If we compare the two, we do believe for the additional $85, the RF1200 really brings a lot more quiet. It becomes a lighter weight helmet. It brings a different aerodynamic profile. It does a lot of things that really take the helmet to the next level. But that said, there are a few things that we absolutely love. What we're gonna get in depth about this helmet, one is the more conservative look, two is it's more well-designed for an upright riding position, and really three, if we look at it, Part of that upright riding position is the fact that the vent scheme is laid out, so you're gonna get a better airflow if you are sitting in that perfect upright riding position. So again, a lot of things done well, well executed, $40 more than where the Quest stands today. But again, now you're getting dangerously close into that same bracket within $100 of the RF1200. So again, you have to compare and contrast the two. Let's dive into fit because that plays as part of this overview conversation of what works and what doesn't. The new RFSR, which again, at this stage of the game is just coming in solids. Again, I like the Revzilla Orange. There are other solids available. No graphics yet. It's gonna fit just like the RF1200. So intermediate to long oval in its head shape. That's my head shape. That's most of the US market. Showy does their research, they're listening, they're looking at this range of helmets and saying it should fit most of the US market. That's great when you think about it, except for the previous version of the Quest had a more neutral to round shape, which meant if you were a little bit wider through the temples, you'd have a better experience. Now Shoei doesn't have a helmet once the Quest goes away, if it goes away, for that more intermediate to neutral head shape. So again, keep that in mind, but all in, this is the more common head shape. A Little bit longer front to back, and remember, we'll ship for free over 39 bucks, use the size chart, no surprises there. Again, if you're wearing a RF1200, if you're wearing any of the newer showy head shapes, this is going to be consistent with that little bit longer front to back, if anything, getting closer to the narrow mark. Now, remember as well, I'd love to click our logo, subscribe to us at Revzilla on our YouTube channel, leave me your comments, requests, and your feedback on the new RFSR. So now that you have a gauge of kind of where this plays in the universe from Shoei, more touring oriented, a little bit more of a conservative look to it, a little bit more upright oriented, but again, the price has now crept up into the 400s, let's break it down start to finish. You're looking at the same shell as the RF1200. This is your PIM Plus. It's an integrated composite shell, which is gonna use resins, carbon fiber, and other materials to make that structure, which is going to carry a Snell and DOT rating while staying reasonably light. Now, it's gonna come in at three pounds, nine and a half ounces, which is right down the middle of fairway for premium helmets. I will tell you though, the RF1200 is three pounds, eight ounces. Ounce and a half, are you really gonna feel it? I don't think that's one of the key differentiators, but again, for another 85 bucks, you can get a lighter helmet, which has more of the DNA that this helmet started with. If we look at some of the other elements of this outer shell. Remember, it's more upright oriented. It's going to be great on a, on a motorcycle in a more upright riding position that might have a windscreen. Notice the vents are positioned high on the head. Now front on, it's an aggressive look. You're gonna see different vent actuation, very positive. Now there's a positive and a negative here when we talk about these vents. One of the things that we noticed, now we rode this helmet here in Philadelphia. I actually got to try this helmet out in Japan in the wind tunnel. I happened to be there and show you, let me put it on, jump in the wind tunnel. RF1200, I even put on an X14. One of the things I noticed is it vented solidly. It was not what I wasn't expected from the helmet. I will say, it flowed a great amount of air in most optimally the upright riding position, but when I started to turn my head left or right for more head checks, maybe more of an aggressive move compared to the upright rider or the more touring inspired rider that's gonna be more comfortable with their mirrors, what I did find is that it was a bit noisier. I heard the wind a little bit more. At certain angles, I was getting a little bit of whistling. It wasn't anything to jump off the bridge about, but again, all in this helmet, universally is not as quiet as the RF1200. So again, just take that as our comparison of the two because I'm sure 
Within 85 bucks, you're gonna be looking at both of them. The other thing we notice is the chin vent. It's only a two position. It's open and closed. It doesn't have that third position which either vents to the visor or vents to the face. This helmet is either closed or it's venting directly to the visor. So keep that in mind so you're losing one of those positions. And when we work our way around to the back here, you're gonna see the aerodynamic profile which is much more aggressive than that of a Quest. It is a big leap forward. You have a little bit of an integrated spoiler again to streamline things and you do have your passive vents along the back. So that fast moving air is gonna move over the sphere, create the vacuum here, and it's gonna venturi out. Yes, venturi is now a verb. It's gonna use the venturi effect to pull warm, moist air out through the helmet, enters through the inside, hopefully pulls warm, moist, sweaty air away, allowing it to evaporate off your head, keeping your cool, and evacuate out through the back. So you're gonna see they have streamlined and simplified things and really updated the shell. The shell looks great, the color looks great. Again, this is that pearlescent orange. Now, one of the things that I do love here is when we talk about the visor. Now, you are gonna get a pin lock standard in the box. Pin lock is the double pane window that allows you to get anti-fog through the laws of physics, not through a coat which is nice, we don't have it installed today, that's those poach. But what I do like is it's the same visor you're seeing on the other Shoei helmets. So now that Shoei has that transition lens, which uses that photochrome Excel that goes from basically clear to medium dark smoke in about 20 seconds, you can buy that visor separately and use it here on the new RFSR. It also, has the spring-loaded mechanism, which allows you to create an even better seal around the gasket. You pull it down here, the spring pulls it back in, locks it down. Again, we didn't see that on the Quest. We now have that now on the RFSR, pulling everything together. And again, it's just using the next standard for the premium components from Shoei that you're seeing in the other helmets, making it way down to what I would consider their entry level. But around the $400 mark, it is not an entry-level helmet. This is very much a premium helmet. It's just a different distillation of some of the basic components. So if you get a quick shot of the side, here, shot of the front, you can see it 360 around. Let me grab my donut and let's start to pull it apart. One of the things I love is you have emergency cheek pad removal system now baked in. So again, if you happen to be out cold, if you're doing a lot of miles and you run into trouble, EMTs can pull this out without moving your neck. That is a nice feature. You're also gonna see it is a quite large chin skirt here to block some of the air, especially in colder weather times of the year that might be coming up from the bottom. We start to pull everything apart. We start to feel that it basically mimics and is very nearly the same as something like an RF 1200. So cool Max lining. I've got my, which is antimicrobial as well as wicking. I have my emergency cheek pad removal system. Notice it's a contoured cheek pad. This is a 3.5 millimeter. Again, I can go up or down to fine tune this. No surprises there. It is going to be more of an intermediate oval contour than we would have seen with the Quest. If you're comparing the two, again, that was a more rounder shape. Again, no surprises. Premium guts from Shoei, the same materials. We start to pull it out. You're gonna see 10 millimeter vent holes. And one of the things that I love they're doing on this helmet, again, plastic on plastic connection points along the brow. You're not gonna feel these, they're not up on the forehead. You do have snaps down below the occipital ridge on your head. Notice when I turn it inside out, there's not even any mesh on the top. It's basically premium components, again, that are cleanable, washable, air dryable, but it's going to flow a ton of air. And again, you can see some are sonically welded, some are stitched. It's meant to give you the best chance of no pressure points as Shoei is taking a very 3D and premium approach to the ergonomics around the head for the comfort liner. And if we open it up, you're probably wondering, great cutouts that are removable for the speaker pocket. So keep them in to dampen some of the noise on this helmet. If you wanna add a third party device like a Cena or a Cardo, you can then pull them out, put that speaker in, and that's not gonna create unnecessary pressure along your ear. If we look at the internal guts beyond that, you're looking at a basic ventilation scheme, 10 millimeter vent holes working front to back, exiting out the back. Some air is gonna channel down and exit down through the bottom under your neck as well. But again, that is what Shoei's done. So when we think about this helmet, like I said, it stands on the DNA of what they developed with the X14 with the RF1200 that works so well. And remember, we consider the RF1200 still to be the gold standard, the Goldilocks of motorcycle helmets in this four to $600 categories. It just does everything well. It's a little bit sportier, so it really can cover your track days all the way to your everyday touring, three quarter or in the upright riding position. This helmet, a bit more conservative in its style, in its approach and its orientation as it's gonna be more upright oriented, not as quiet as the 1200, doesn't vent as well as the 1200, it saves you $85, it's a hair heavier than the 1200, but all in it, it's a rock solid helmet. We also think that if you have maybe a more mature style or wanna take a more conservative approach to even the look and feel of the helmet, this could really work well. But again, it's that balancing act. If you're in the $400 range though, my recommendation to you would not be making a decision based on the 85 bucks. You're already spending $400, buy the helmet that you're optimizing to do more of what you need it and really think about the style. They're the limiting factors or the differentiating factors here between an RFSR and something like a 1200. Now, the next step in your journey is to click the info button, your desktop, your mobile device, visit the product detail page, 
page at RevZilla.com. Read other writer reviews. That was my opinion, our opinion, based on our writing and our research, but you should form your own and see what other writers have to say about it. Also, keep in mind, we're going to ship free over 39 bucks. If you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown. Remember to subscribe to us at RevZilla on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion. Latest and greatest in the motor universe. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.